It's been five months since President Biden took office, but there are still a number of people who believe former President Trump won the 2020 election. Not only are false claims about election fraud continuing to spread, the effort is well-funded, backed by millions of dollars from wealthy Americans. That money is also helping fund election audits in states like Arizona. A recent article in The Washington Post looks at some of the people behind this funding and how it's fueling the belief among millions of Americans that the election was stolen from Mr. Trump. Rosalind Helderman is one of the authors of that article and joins me now. Rosalind is a political investigative reporter at The Washington Post. Rosalind, you point out that people like former Overstock.com chief executive officer Patrick Byrne and MyPillow CEO Mike Lindell are pouring millions of dollars into perpetuating lies about the election. What's in it for them? Or do they believe that the election truly was stolen? Well, look, it's hard to get into their heads. They certainly say uh, that they really believe uh, what they've been saying. I do think it's worth noting that they have both built uh, large bases of supporters uh, based off of this. Uh, Mike Lindell recently went to uh, Donald Trump's rally in Ohio, where he was greeted as a real celebrity. Lots of people wanted to take their pictures with the two of them. Uh, and I also think that we need to pay some attention to the possible financial motive. Uh, they have both put their own money into this effort, but they're also raising money from other people. And Mike Lindell's uh, company, My Pillow, advertises extensively uh, to the same people that he's talking to about the election. Well, that leads next into my other question, because it's not just wealthy Americans. It's also everyday people who are donating money to uh, expose this alleged election fraud. But do we know more about what that money is actually being spent on? Yeah, it's a little hard to say. There's a whole bunch of groups uh, that have been launched to raise money from ordinary Americans around the topic. They, they generally say election integrity. Uh, some of the money definitely is being sent to Arizona to fund uh, the Republican commissioned uh, review of ballots in Maricopa County. Uh, that's an expensive process. Uh, there's $150,000 of taxpayer money that's put in, been put into that, but it's clearly costing millions more. Uh, but these organizations that have been founded to raise money from, um, from ordinary people don't have to report either how much they're raising or what they're spending it on. Uh, so it's a little bit of a, of a black box. We don't really know where the money is going. Rosalind, given that the major social media platforms like Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube have really cracked down on people who spread misinformation about the 2020 election, how are these false claims continuing to spread now? Yeah, one of the really interesting uh, things we found uh, is that there's a whole alternate world of media out there for people who want to immerse themselves in it. Uh, Twitter and Facebook have been replaced by Telegram. YouTube is being replaced by a new platform called Rumble. Uh, there's all kinds of podcasts devoted to these topics. Uh, so it, certainly the, uh, the banishing off of mainstream media platforms has forced the audience to become smaller. Uh, but in many ways kind of uh, more purified. Uh, it's really possible to get hours and hours of content uh, all day long on these topics if you're interested in it uh, and really sort of never touch uh, the world that most of the rest of America is consuming in terms of media. And you also spoke with a few researchers who have been following and analyzing the 2020 election fallout. What kind of lasting impact do they think that perpetuating this type of misinformation could have? Yeah, there's deep concern out there from election experts, from uh, election officials, as well as academics and other researchers. You know, when you look at the polling, the numbers of Americans who believe that the election was fraudulent, who believe that uh, Joe Biden is not the legitimate president, uh, those numbers haven't fallen in the months and months since the election. They've, they've remained very steady. Some polls show it's actually risen. And so there's real concern that we're going to have trouble in this country having an election again in which the outcome outcome is accepted by a broad number of Americans. And when you get to that place, it, you know, you're really looking at the start of the unraveling, I'm sorry, the unraveling of democracy, uh, which is a very frightening thought. Hmm. And Rosalind, you also say in your article that people who believe in the, quote, big lie are particularly interested in the Arizona election audit. Tell us more about that. 
Sure. Uh, so this is this process that's been underway since April uh, to recount all the ballots and review things uh, in in. Phoenix, in the Phoenix area, Maricopa County. And, you know, the most extreme version of uh, the, the, the media that these folks are consuming tells them that that is the first domino in a process some people believe will result in Donald Trump being reinstated as president. There is no provision that would allow for that in U.S. law. Uh, but these folks are convinced that this audit, which is being um, run by people who um, believe the, the election was stolen, uh, has been widely criticized um, in, in its procedures. Uh, these folks believe that the audit it is going to show that, that the election was stolen from Donald Trump in Arizona, that the Arizona legislature will vote to decertify Joe Biden's win in that state, and then other states will do the same. Michigan, Pennsylvania, Georgia, and uh, Joe Biden will be uh, determined to have not been lawfully elected, even though every piece of actual evidence uh, shows otherwise. All right. Rosalind Helderman, thank you. Thank you.